Uh, thank you, comrades. Uh, let me then hasten to do what I'm supposed to do, to introduce the leader who is going to give us the keynote address. The comrade is the General Secretary of, of SATU, also the Central Committee member of the South African Communist Party. He is the Deputy President of Education International. Comrades serve at different levels of the organization, at the level of the site, as a site steward, at the level of the branch, as a secretary, at the level of the region, at the level of the province, as the provincial chairperson of Houten, and also serve at lower levels as the organizer, because, you know, such has a history. Some structures that were there previously we're no longer talking about because the organization has transformed. So at that time you were every, everything, you organizer, the branch leader and so forth. So he also became the national treasurer of SATU before becoming the deputy general secretary of SATU and then finally becoming the General Secretary of SATU. By the profession, he's a teacher, he holds the principal position. The comrade has also uh, its limit. Just two days ago, he obtained the degree in the, uh, let me check. Yeah. Uh, 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 masters uh, of business administration. Two days ago, he obtained that. <laughs> and he also possesses a degree, a master's degree in labor. Oh. is also studying for doctorate in labor law and will be completing that next year. Comrade, Comrade, let me welcome on stage our general secretary. Let me welcome to the stage, but before he ascends the stage, Let's uh, give him a strong revolutionary song, comrades. <laughs> Let me take this opportunity to thank and recognize our Vice President, Comrade Sikavate, our Provincial Chair, Comrade Lucy, and the Provincial Secretary of SATU, Comrade Muloi, and the entire leadership of our union in the Free State. Let me also recognize our leadership of the party led by our National Chairperson, Comrade Hussein Zeni Zawala. Also the Secretary, Comrade Stofile, who has just left. Let me also greet and recognize our leadership from Kusatu, the Chair, and the Secretary, Comrade Matazi and Comrade Masugera. 
But also let me greet our comrades from Lesotho, Real de Boa, Halifixi de Baitape. We are with you in your struggles. We are aware of what is happening in Lesotho, and then we stand with you. We pledge our solidarity with the teachers of Lesotho. Let me also thank all our comrades who are here, with their children in particular, who joined us this morning when we did Matthew Goniwe Fun Walk. Now, there are those who are unfair. When we were walking, they were running. <laughs> now, myself and the chair, clearly it is that we could not cope. Now, people felt sorry for us, and they sent a car to give us a lift. <laughs> so we must confess that as we arrived first, we had to make sure that we skip some of the requirements. But we then revolted as usual. When you are with Comrade Lucy, clearly you are going to have to revolt. So we say to Comrade, please, can you drop us here? Barakibu oh. Yakishna Mike. But Comrade Macheri, I know because he's a photographer. <laughs> so we revolted this morning and said, no, we need to finish our work because we don't know what we are going to be given. Uh, if there are going to be medals, we also want to <coughs> qualify for those medals. So I must say, having revolted, we qualified to have the medals. So we do have our medals, except one Comrade Stabat who will have to walk after this. <laughs> so she qualifies for the men. Uh, and this work has helped us because we believe inside you that a healthy body will always project a healthy mind. And therefore, a healthy mind is what we need inside you. And therefore, that's why we care about what we eat, we care about what we do, so that we are able to be healthy. So today, as we are going to be talking about the life and the times of Comrade Matthew Goniwe, an unparalleled inspiration of all education workers in our country and abroad, I am going to try to talk about history. Try to talk about history. And I know wherever you are seated, you'll then say, what do I have to do with this history? Today is the 21st century. The comrade was killed some many years ago. And this man comes here today to come and talk about history. So, pardon me, I'm going to talk about history. Because I don't suffer from hubris. I believe that we have got to learn lessons from those who founded our organization and why we have named our building or our headquarters Matthew Goniwe, so that uh, we then have an appreciation as the leadership and members of SATU of the role that the comrade has played and why he was a threat to the apartheid government. Comrade Matthew Goniwe, and uh, they used to be calling them the crowd of four. That was Matthew Goniwe, Sparum uh, Kondo, Mklauli um, and Galata, and where Comrade Koniwe learned the ropes of leadership and one who ins inspired him to be the leader that we are talking about him today was Reverend Galata, who was the volunteer of the African National Congress, who also was the Secretary General of the African National Congress. So when we are seated and talk about the Freedom Charter, and then say the Freedom Charter you need to understand where the Freedom Charter basically comes from. It comes from a community of Kedo, which was very militant. So the first meeting about why we need to have a Freedom Charter was a meeting that was held in Kedo, under the leadership of Mbati, under the leadership of Kalata, and many, many others who were struggling at the time, who said it is important for us to go around and talk to people. So this comrade, Matthew Koniwe, is born in that particular militant community of Lingelese, but in the Kredo area. So he's born amongst the leaders who had committed themselves that we will not 
allow ourselves to be poisoned and therefore not challenge the atrocities, not challenge colonialism, and not challenge the apartheid government. So this is the man who comes from there, who then was taught and who learned and had to go to school. But I needed to just briefly talk about this history about that particular community. Because when the meeting was held in 1953 about the Freedom Charter, they then agreed that we need volunteers, and many people then volunteered. But what was difficult, because Matthew Gonewe was born of the parents who were farm laborers. Now how do you go to the farms and convince the people in the farms that you need to change their situation? that you need to bring this freedom and democracy in our country, that we need to fight for our country. So then they volunteered, and the volunteers went to the farm, they went to the industry, they went to the mine, and everywhere. But he being the son of the laborers, and eight children in that particular family. So the parents, basically it means they were denied education. Clearly it is that his parents were denied education and freedom of association and freedom of speech because they were in the farms. Now let me characterize the farms at the time. Now when you have to go to the farms to go and convince the people that are farm workers, you've got first to get permission from the boss, okay, or from the missus. And at that time, when you have to say, I come from the African National Congress, you will not be allowed to address the farm workers. If you say, I come from a community that is struggling for freedom because we want to challenge this regime, this is a legitimate regime, you will not be allowed to talk to them. So these volunteers had to adopt a strategy of saying, when you go to the farms, you first have got to be a relative of a farm worker. So whether you are a relative, you need to make sure that you, you are somehow you must be a relative of the Gonuas to talk to the Gonuas on the farm. So if you have got to be the relative of the Mshaulis, you have got to be a relative of the comrades or the farm workers that are there. So as you go there, you say, I'm a cousin okay, of this particular farm worker. And then when they slaughter you a chicken, then at that time, you talk about politics. This is our history, and we've got to own this particular history. So that is what has happened. And the first demand, Comrade Zawad, that came as the first demand for the Freedom Charter in these meetings in the farms, in the meetings in the communities, in the meetings in the villages where you meet the chiefs, and of course Comrade Zawad, the chiefs, some of them were very reactionary at that time. So as well, when you go to meet the community as a volunteer to talk about freedom, to talk about why we must fight, you also needed to have somebody who is at a higher level, who is respected by the chief in that particular community, and you need to have a relationship. And this is what the young man, only will end for him to be an organizer of UDF, an organizer of the credo, you know, a community organization, and youth structures of credo. He learned from the best that you need to associate, you need to be on the ground with the people. So these volunteers then would go and talk to Indunas, and then they would be able to be introduced to the chiefs. And that's how it spread. And in all these instances, Comrade Lucy, Lucy in all these instances, the first demand was land. That the first demand in the Freedom Charter must be land. Because land is wealth. Because land is our identity. Because land is us. Without land, you are nothing. You are not a people. You can't be a people without a land. The land identifies you. So this is the history, our history that we had to fight. So today, as we go to the election, we're talking about land, and other people are saying, now why are we talking about the land? We don't need the land. Of course, it's the poison that we're going to talk about because education must help us to decolonize. It must help us to do away with miseducation. It must help us to be us. So I needed just to characterize where the comrades come from. Of course, we are saying that it's an inspiration. But I would be wrong if I don't characterize the global situation today. 
so that we are able to understand the, this inspirational leader, this leader called Meshe Goniwe, and why education is powerful, and that which Comrade Mandela said is a powerful weapon that we can use to change the world. But Lenin also said, education is a powerful weapon, and it depends in whose hands it is. That's why the flocks, the Fairwood, understood. If we have education in our hands, we can poison the people. And they did very well, Comrade Machete. They poisoned us. And that's why we are going to vote for the DA, because we are poisoned. <laughs> So let me go to reading, because Matthew Bonio was a, a scholar. But let me characterize the global wealth as we commemorate and remember this comment. Because he was a teacher, and because he was a community leader, and because he was a revolutionary and an activist in a community that was oppressed, in a community that had not enjoyed the rights and the freedoms that we enjoy today. So as we do this memorial lecture, we need to then say, in which world are we finding ourselves today in the 21st century? And I want to characterize the world that we find ourselves as a world that is so depressed, a world that is so dreaded, a world that is so angry today. Then the fate of many things hung in the balance. Whether you talk about freedom, whether you talk about you know, education, when you talk about economy, everything is hanging in the balance. Comrades, the planet, the democracy, peace and, and prosperity today is hanging in the balance. And only few people will have the guts to talk about this thing. Because if poison has been imbibed in your body, it runs through your veins and therefore it will make you to suffer from cognitive dissonance that whatever is said, whatever we hear about Matthew Gonewe, it is not true. What is truth is what I have imbibed and it is in me. So I'm saying everything hangs, hangs in the balance because we are living in the world that is so angry. But this is in the story that we tell ourselves yet. Our wisest minds aren't up to the task our ideas and paradigms are, are not capable of reciting this narrative that indeed the world is so depressed today. They are so blindly, fatically attached to our failed systems, our busted ideology of capitalism that are crashing and burning in great waves of extremism today, of nationalism, of racism, of hate, we and the children being attacked because the world is angry, and that is what is the context today. Everything is falling, comrades. Everything we can, in one word in English, is that we are in a catastrophe because everything is falling. If you look today, if you were to check on your balance today in the bank, how much are you going to find? Everything is collapsing. If you check medical aid, you might not have to, uh, to be paid if you go to the doctor next week. And then you will blame Malula and say, give us 20,000 for medical aid. Even if I can give you 50,000 for the medical aid, capitalism is dealing with everything. Everything is in hanging in the balance. Because you are not in charge. Your gems is not in charge. Those who are in charge are those who are rich today. And so down we go, falling.